we stand together as we begin our service? Just a reminder, we do have a nursery available this morning, and you are welcome to, uh, to put your little, littlest ones in there. Let's begin our service by, uh, let's see, I've already messed it up, <laughs> because we're going to start with a video. So unless you really want to watch it standing, we're going to let you sit. That was practice. Hi, everyone. George Maddie Higgins again, coming to you from Eastern Europe with the International Mission Board. First of all, we want to say thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Most of all, we want to say thank you for your support and prayer and giving. Um, you are the reason that we are on the field, and we are so grateful uh, that we have been allowed to come and do this work on your behalf in Eastern Europe. Um, you all are so special to us, and we recognize that we just would not be here without you. Um, so thank you so much. We also wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas and just know that we are praying for you and your churches as you do outreach in your communities, um, that you would be able to just continue to share Jesus' love in this time. And as Bloody Moon Christmas offering comes up uh, this year, as it always does, we want to ask that you give prayer. Because mm -hmm. it is that support which allows us to be here and do the work of ministry that God has called us to. Thank you very much for everything that you've done. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hi. So, so that was uh, my middle son and his wife um, from uh, there in uh, Eastern Europe, and uh, they did that uh, that video for us. Um, they will be moving very soon, uh, the first part of the year, to a new uh, location in Croatia, and so we would appreciate certainly your prayers for them. But uh, about two years ago, Lottie Moon got real personal for Cheryl. God has blessed them so much, and they, they're working with college-age students, and uh, it's been great because as they've been learning the language, they've been able to take the classes on college campuses, and so they have, uh, they had a really sweet time as they finished their semester, she said, uh, Maddie said, because uh, they had gotten very, very close to other, other people who are learning Croatian, and so, uh, just some really great things are happening over there, and it's been a blessing for us to to hear from them. And so, uh, you you guys have actually met Maddie's uh, little sister, uh, whose name is escaping me right now. Sure. Sydney, Sydney, um, and she she came and shared with you about the, the, the mission trip that she began here just recently. So. Um, we appreciate your prayers, we appreciate your support, and I'm very pleased to let you know that we have eclipsed our lighting and goal for this year. So I think you should you can give yourselves a hand for that. Um, but, I, but I also want to tell you that we're still receiving the funds. If you if God has laid it on your heart, please don't think that because we hit the goal that uh, that, that lets you off the hook. Okay. In any case. Good morning. And Merry Christmas. You guys, for the most part, look very festive. I, I'm not going to name names or anything like that. If you're our guest, we want to greet you. We want to tell you that we're glad that you're here. You can find this card that says Welcome on one side and Connect card on the other. It's there in the, the rack of the pew. If you would just bless us this morning by giving us a little bit of information, letting us know how we can pray for you. And then out of the in the, in the lobby there, there are places for you to, to give this as well as an offering if that's, but, but if you're our guest, we just want this from you. Just this. This would bless us. You don't need to give us any money or anything like that. Can we pray together as we, as we begin our service? Father in heaven, you are the reason that we're here. Because of your faithfulness to the promises that you have made to generation after generation, your son came. He was born in a little town in Bethlehem. He did not come with great fanfare or flash, but he came a humble king, a servant 
submitted to you and to your will. God, as we gather this morning, fill us with awe and wonder. Fill us with joy and gladness. Fill our hearts with thankfulness. Allow us, God, to come before you with singing, with prayers that are guided by your Spirit, that are answered according to your will. And God, as we commune together later in this service, draw us close to you, that we might seek forgiveness for sin, that we might receive that forgiveness. And God, that we would see more clearly the path you have for us as we journey out of this year and into the next. God, may you be honored and glorified in everything that is said and everything that is done. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you may stand again. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error. soul felt its worth, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn.
seated. We invite our readers to come at this time for our scripture reading. This is the Simpson family. Okay. Hi. Oh, there you go. Hi. Start again. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Today we're reading Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but an angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in the manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem, let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds The shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Merry Christmas. This morning we celebrate both the day Jesus Christ was born, Christmas, and the day Jesus Christ rose from the dead, Sunday, the first day of the week that the first Christians began worshiping the risen Jesus. Jesus came to deal with our sin, and deal with it he did. We celebrate both today, the baby in the manger and the Messiah risen from the grave. Merry Christmas. There's a lot of celebrating Jesus. All right, will you pray with us? Lord, um, it's incredible to think that the eternal living God saw our mess and came and entered into it. Jesus, we're so grateful for your love, for your compassion, for your generosity, for your care. God, I pray that you would give us eyes to see you today. All the people in your churches all around the world, God, open our eyes to see you. Lord, open our ears to hear from you. Open our minds to be able to understand what you have prepared for those who love you. God, I pray that we would be people who are overwhelmed by who you really are. God, that we wouldn't be able to stop talking about you, Jesus. We love you. We're grateful, Lord, and we um, give this day and every day to you, Lord. May we honor you with our lives, God, and I pray that many today would taste and see that you are good. There is none like you, Lord, and we praise and worship you alone. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. invite you to stand with us once again.
What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch are keeping? This, this is Christ the King. Whom shepherds guard and angels sing Haste, haste to bring him all The babe, the son of Mary So bring him incense, gold and word Come peasant king to all the King of kings salvation brings Let loving hearts enthrone Him This, this is Christ the King Whom shepherds, God, and angels see Haste, haste to bring Him on The babe, the Son of Man I want to invite uh, the children to come forward at this time for Pastor's Pals. We have a special gift. All right, you may be seated as well. All right, you guys come on down. Uh, kids, we do have a little gift for you, so you want to make sure and come get that. In just a second, I'll give it to you. And uh, parents, we do have uh, nursery today for uh, the youngest kids uh, up to age three, if you want to. If you need that help, you're welcome to it. Uh, all the rest of you are going to keep you in service today. Welcome, you guys. How you doing? Uh, doing good? Not sure, not sure? Well, this is a day to be doing good. Today we celebrate somebody's birthday. All around the world, people are celebrating somebody's birthday. Does anybody know who that is? Jesus. Jesus. You got it. That's right. Uh, let's hear how Luke tells us exactly how this birth Happen. This is just the verses right before what the Simpson family read to us just a second ago. Listen. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. This is God's word. You know, we all have different traditions and ways of celebrating at Christmas. Uh, how do you guys celebrate Christmas? Anything your family does to celebrate Christmas? Do you eat any certain foods? Um, I don't know. Don't know? Do you guys eat any certain foods? Somebody told me they had last night tamales and pozole Wait. to celebrate Christmas. Anybody do that? What? Yeah, foods. What about, does anybody, do you guys give these things at Christmas time? Anybody do that? Do you get Christmas presents for Christmas? I always do. Always do. All right. I like this guy. I'm glad you're down here with me. Otherwise, this would not go so well. <laughs> you know, there are all kinds of awesome Christmas traditions, aren't there? That some do presents. Some don't do presents. You know that? Some like trees. Some don't like trees. There are Advent candles uh, and Christmas. calendars. I think we do presents and a Christmas tree. Presents and a Christmas tree. There are nativity scenes and nativity songs. You guys catch this part. All of those things can be wonderful if they point us to Jesus on his birthday. I even have several friends who catch this, bake a birthday cake for Jesus at Christmas time on his birthday. What? But did you know many people can get distracted 
by all the things, the presents and the trees. And guess what? They forget to worship Jesus on his birthday. Can you believe that? It's true. How would you feel at your birthday party if everybody ran off from you and ignored you the rest of the day at your party? That wouldn't be a very good birthday party, would it? It's your birthday. And Christmas is the birthday of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And did you know sometimes even us, we can forget that, can't we? I think it's the coolest thing when Christmas Day lines up with Sunday, as the Simpsons were talking about a minute ago. Adults, do you know how often Christmas is on a Sunday? It's not exactly every seven years. Because of that thing called the leap year, which is Karen Lafferty's birthday, by the way, the pattern goes 6, 5, 6, 11. 6, 5, 6, 11. Six years, and Christmas will be on a Sunday. Five, and then again on a Sunday. Six more years, and then on a Sunday. And then 11 years, and it hits Sunday. And guess what? 11 is up next. The next day Christmas is on a Sunday will be 2033. So to me, it's super special when Christmas is on a Sunday because Christmas is the day that we celebrate Jesus' birthday and we worship him. And Sunday, as they read, is the day that Jesus rose from the grave. The very first Christians, on the very first day of the week, when they came to that tomb after the crucifixion of Jesus, it says they found it empty and they worshipped Jesus. And kids, did you know that every Sunday for 2,000 plus years, Christians have been gathering to worship Jesus. Worship is right every day, but especially on Sunday and on Christmas Day. And how cool when they're the same day. So every present that we give this year should help us remember to say in our hearts, Happy Birthday, Jesus. Let's pray together, kids. God, we thank you so much that you came to this earth wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger as a little baby. God, we thank you and we ask that every Christmas tradition that we put into place, that we love, that they would never take the place of the real meaning of Christmas, your birthday, Jesus. Fill us with joy and peace as we remember all you have accomplished. We are so blessed when we are in you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Kiddos, we've got a present for you guys. Make sure you get that on your way back. Help you listen in the sermon. Let's stand together once again. Away in a no crib for a bed The little Lord Jesus Lay down His sweet bed The stars in the sky Look down where He lay The little Lord Jesus Asleep on the hay The cattle are lowing The baby awakes But little Lord Jesus No crying he makes I love the Lord Jesus Look down from the sky And stay by my cradle Till morning is nigh The cattle are lowing The baby awakes Crying, he made.
beautiful music, Greg and worship team, thank you so much for leading us on Christmas Day. It's a great day to sing to the Lord Jesus. Great job, church family, on completing your goal for uh, world missions, uh, the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, and pretty neat to have uh, one of Greg's sons and his wife as the recipient of that offering. I think it's, it's pretty awesome. I want to welcome you. If you're a guest to our church family, I see many of you in the room. I hope you feel the presence and love of Jesus Christ in this room. We're so glad that you're here. We love your family that brought you or your friends, and we hope that you'll make it a regular practice to come to church uh, here if that's uh, within uh, the, the driving range possibilities for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Christmas Day. We've heard your perfect word read and sung. And now, Father, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts would be pleasing in your sight, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we were telling the kids, today is the birthday of Jesus Christ, isn't it? There's one more aspect to his birthday that I want to bring out uh, in our, our little sermon today and as we prepare our hearts to take the Lord's Supper. Normally, when we go to a birthday party, we make a big deal about that person. We give him presents, we sing her happy birthday. It's all about the birthday boy or the birthday girl, and on Jesus' birthday, Christmas, we do want to worship and give and sing and make a big deal about him, as we talked about with the kids. But let me ask you this. What birthday party do you go to where the guest of honor is the present? And he's the present for you. Where he gives literally everything on your behalf. I say this because this is what I think Luke is, it's kind of the the main message that he's trying to show us as he describes the historical events surrounding the birth of of Jesus, that that baby wrapped in swaddling clothes is like a gift that God wrapped with the most expensive paper for you and me. Our present on his birthday. I want you to see in Luke's gospel three aspects of this incredible Christmas gift. If you haven't, if you would open a Bible to Luke chapter 2, we're looking at verses 1 through 20. Uh, There are Bibles there in the pew. You can also uh, punch it in on your phone if you prefer that. Uh, What I want you to see this morning are three aspects of this incredible Christmas gift. Number one, the old kingdom and old kings, verses 1 through 3. Number two, the inbreaking of a new king, verses 4 through 7. And third, the institution of a better kingdom. Verses 8 through 20. So notice with me first, and the old kingdom and old kings. Notice there in verse 1 and 2, the name Caesar Augustus and Quirinius of Syria. What we often miss, because this was not our culture, is that these names did not conjure up positive thoughts in first century Israel. These were leaders of foreign occupying forces who demanded much and gave little. Rome occupied Israel by military force, war. Uprisings in Rome, brutally putting them down again, happened both before and after the first Christmas, after the life of Christ. Political frustration, rants, and conflict were as much a part of the first Christmas as they are today. I hope that might encourage you. Don't miss that Luke is setting up a contrast, though, that Jesus is different. Don't miss in verse 1 this decree that verse 3, everyone had to travel to register to their own town. This census, we don't talk about this, this was forced on people, and it was inconvenient. It didn't matter if you didn't want to go or if you were pregnant and really shouldn't travel. You had to take this journey to be registered for the census. Don't miss second that this census was taken so that Rome could take 
money. Rome took taxes, and the primary reason for this census was taxation. The secular historians marvel at Luke's accuracy here. He describes this as the first Quirinius census there in verse 2. And then he'll mention the second census when Luke gets to Acts chapter 5. He's also the author of that book. Well, Josephus, who is a Roman historian and other historians mark these censuses in exactly the same way and time frame that Luke did. And they tell us that taxation was the primary purpose. Quirinius was the governor in charge of taxation of this region. Even though it says Syria, he was also in charge of Israel. And finally, don't miss that this census was taken so that Rome could inscript auxiliary soldiers from the people of Israel. Rome took boys to support their soldiers in battles. These auxiliary soldiers would carry armaments and food and serve the paid Roman soldiers. The point is this. The Roman Empire took and took and took. But Jesus is different. That's the old kingdom and old kings, but it still happens today. It's the way of men. We see in, we just saw in the news, people in Russia, men of fighting age, running out of that country so they didn't get inscripted into a war that they didn't at all believe in. In the United States, national debt is at $31 trillion. That's all. That's about $248,000 per taxpayer. Money that our government has promised that our taxes will pay. But God is showing us something very unique in the world of men, in the kingdoms of men here. There's second, an inbreaking of a new king. So the old king and kingdoms, verses 1 through 3 first, and now there's a new king coming into the world. His kingdom is different. He has come to give. On his birthday. Look at verse 4 with me. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Remember, as we've studied how for centuries in the Old Testament, the prophets had been promising that God was going to send this different Savior, this new King. And we've looked at some of those promises. Remember what it says here that so many times there in verse 4, that Joseph was of the house of David. That's because. It had been prophesied that the new king had to come from the line and lineage of David. This new king, verse 5, is born of a virgin. It just says that she and Joseph were engaged. Isaiah had promised the Messiah would be born of a virgin. Isaiah 7, 14. This new king had already had the forerunner who had to come before the new king, John the Baptist, as Malachi had promised. Malachi 3, 1 and 4. This new king was born in Bethlehem, as we just read. Micah promised that. Micah 5.2 in the Old Testament. This new king has come as a child. As Isaiah had promised, Isaiah 9.6, for a child will be born to us, a son will be given. This new king comes not with pomp and circumstance, not with all this notoriety as human kings and leaders always try to make themselves look bigger and more puffed up. No, this new king comes in humility. No room for them in the end. Born to a family in the Davidic line, but far from any halls of power, money, or prestige. Instead, born to a carpenter's family. Listen to Luke and scholar James Edwards describe this contrast that Luke is setting up for us. He says this, The disarming intrusion of God into the world in the birth of Jesus stands in sharp contrast to the imperial ambitions of Caesar Augustus. God does not break into the world in a world leader, fuhrer, or cosmic hero, 
all of which Caesar epitomized. God penetrates the defensive armor of the world by sending His Son as a child. Not to the well-connected and established, but to shepherds who live on the precarious margins of society. It's true, shepherds were the lowest of the low in terms of who was powerful and had money in the first century. And yet what's so profound is that in this humble birth is literally everything you and I need. Wrapped up in those clothes, that wrapping paper of heaven, is everything that your soul and mine long for. Opposed to human rulers who do elbow and push and scratch and claw for power, God didn't need notoriety. Instead, He chose to be born as a child destined to give us everything. You know, I believe miracles happen all the time. Just in praying for people and seeing them get well, seeing people who doctors said, man, you really should have died last week and yet uh, you didn't. Uh, I just think that they really happen all the time all around us, seeing marriages repaired that were on the brink of destruction. But for me, the greatest miracles I've ever seen in my life are the births of my two kids. I don't know if you've had the privilege of seeing a child be delivered, but it is astounding, is it not? The way the mother's body works, the way the child heartily survives all that. It shows God's glory in the process, does it not? And the parents, if they're honest, sort of know that this is something far beyond their ability to make happen. Parents might joke around that we've made people. But they also, if they're honest, if we're honest, we know that's not quite right. Because you can see this look of terror in first-time parents' eyes when the, the nurse or the doctor hands them that child and says, see you, you're getting kicked out of the hospital. And they're like, what do we do now? Parents can feel so helpless. And yet God is showing himself absolutely sovereign and in control here. Amy and I can barely send out Christmas cards, let alone create life. Amy and I are not very good at sending out Christmas cards with the cute pictures of our family on them. I know for some of you that's easy. It's no big deal. But for whatever reason, uh, I think it's because we're doing one or two other things. Amy and I are not very good at that. But last year, I said, Amy, sweetie, I I would like us to uh, do the Christmas card thing this year. And she looked at me like, "Uh, honey, we don't do that. But I said, no, no, we can do it. We can do it. So we do the whole nine yards. We, Amy, picks matching outfits for our family. We, Amy, schedules to get our pictures taken. And an awesome friend of ours, Hannah Castorana, takes those. She's very gifted at taking pictures. And then we, Amy, loads said pictures into the Christmas card app where we were ordering them from. And here's where I get involved because Amy says, Honey, would you check and make sure all of this looks good? And I check it all. It all looks great. I'm feeling really proud of myself for all of my hard work of delegation that I had done. And we were running just a hair behind at this point. It was the beginning of December, but no problem. Walmart or whomever is going to send us our cards. And, and they do. They arrive the week before Christmas. Perfect. No problem. We'll have plenty of time to mail some of them out and plenty of time to stuff them in the boxes back there in the lobby for people to pick up at church. And, and, and somebody, some sweet wife somewhere went to a lot of work to put those things back there. So don't forget to get your Christmas cards today. We open up one of our cards that day they arrived and we admire all of our work on them. And the pictures look great. But there across one picture is a big watermark. You know what a watermark is, that light text. Well, across of one of our pictures of our family was a big watermark, supposed to look faint and artsy, but it was very distinct and faint and artsy. And this watermark clearly says, Merry Christmas. From the Wilshiringtons. That had not shown up on the app. We thought we had bought 300 Christmas cards from the Reedus family, not the Wilshiringtons. Apparently it makes us look like we don't know how to spell our own names. You know, when, they, when you take the SAT, it's supposedly they give you 50 points just for getting your name right on the test. Well, we wouldn't have even gotten our starter points. 
We were so frustrated. We had checked and double-checked that thing. We just tossed the Christmas cards in the trash. And that's only half the story because this year, Christmas came back around. You know that's what it does. And I said, honey, we should give Christmas cards a go again. And she looked at me. But we decided our friend took such good pictures a year ago that we would rather tell you this story, laugh about it, and use the old pictures, and now fill in the blank on the program for the watermark, read us. And that's our Christmas cards that you have out in the box there for you. Last year's picture with the name right for this year. God sovereignly and capably chooses to enter the world in a realm that shows the glory that is His and His alone. Birth is already miraculous, but to foretell a virgin birth and then make it happen, who can do that? Not a human ruler. To foretell where the birth would happen and from what lineage and how it would happen. Something like 600 Old Testament prophecies about how the Messiah would come. And to do all of that only for Jesus to give himself as a ransom sacrifice for my sins. I'm here to tell you that we accomplish our Christmas cards this year with last year's pictures. We're so human. And so is every other ruler on this planet who is seeking power, money, prestige, trying to bolster up their own positions, save face, and gain power, but not him. This ruler who comes in this way can only be God. Then in Luke, it moves in verse 8 to the shepherds. Uh, The wise men are over in Matthew, so no wise men in Luke's Gospel. Luke has the shepherds. By the way, both of these are foretold as aspects of how the Messiah would come, that kings would bow down and also that he would come to the humble and the part of God's shepherding ministry. An angel appears. This is now Luke's third recorded angelic appearing in verse 8. After 400 years of silence, we've seen an angel talk to Zechariah and to Mary and now to lowly shepherds out in the field, because third, the better kingdom has arrived. Look with me at verse 10. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. The angel is telling us how to think about Christmas, and he says, Nine aspects of this gift of Christmas, nine words that describe who Jesus is. I'll go fast. He says, This baby is. Good news of great joy. Joy is the first word. Remember, we've been studying that in God's presence is fullness of joy. Jesus is the source of joy. Are you melancholy at Christmas? Are you depressed? Want joy for Christmas? Go to God, not the store. Go to God, certainly not the bar. Then in verse 11, we get the second, third, and fourth aspects of this gift. Number two, he is the Savior. Number three, he is the Christ. These are both in verse 11. Christ means the Messiah. That Old Testament promised one, the anointed. Messiah is the Hebrew word. Christ is the Greek word. Four, he is the Lord. So he is joy. He is Savior. He is Christ. He is Lord. The new king is not just somebody that we should have a a little fainting passing thought to once in a while. But He wants to be the Lord of our life, to direct us, to call us to allegiance and obedience. Fifth, He is the sign. Look there in verse 12. It says that the shepherds should get up and go to this Jesus. And as a sign that all of this is true, they will find what we already know from earlier in verse 7, that there will be a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And that was a sign because you didn't put babies in a feeding trough. That's what a manger is. You didn't put babies out in the barn, but that's how God chose to enter the world. Then six, sing. So we have joy, Savior, Christ, third, fourth, Lord, fifth, sign, six, sing. This new king causes heaven to sing. Look at what happens as all of these, there's one angel that's talking to them, and look at verse 13, and suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. 
The angels worship Jesus. Jesus causes singing. Seven, notice that he brings peace. It says there in, in, in verse 14, peace among men with whom he is pleased. It's really important to know about this gift of Jesus. That we only get the gift if we receive it into our lives and open it. It's like a present that's been wrapped perfectly like that one I had up here. And God is giving it to all mankind. But all of these things only become applied to us when we, from God's hands, take that gift into our lives and open it and receive all that God has for us in Christ. We try to make that really easy to understand here at First Baptist Church. And so we say the way you can become a Christian, the way you can receive the gift of God is A, B, C. A, B, C. A is admit your sin to God. To admit, hey, I need a Savior in my life. I'm not perfect. B, believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. As the, the angel says, that's who He is. B, believe on Jesus as your personal Savior. Not just one that was generally given to the world. But now you're receiving that gift in your life. He's your Savior. And C, you confess Jesus as your Lord. Your boss and your King. That's what the angel says. He is the Lord. That's how we become a part of those with whom He is pleased. Here in verse 14. As we take the gift of from God, And we have access to all of this joy and peace. And eighth, wonder. It says that the shepherds wonder about this and they praise God. It says that Mary treasures these things in her heart. And finally, worship. Mary and the shepherds return home worshiping God and thanking Him for all He is. Jesus is, the angel tells us. This gift is joy. He's Savior. He's Christ. He's Lord. He's the sign of from God, He brings singing, peace, wonder, and worship. This really is a better king. And He's got a better kingdom. One pastor summarizes Christmas this way. Christmas is the Son of God expressing the love of God to save us from the wrath of God so we could enjoy the presence of God. I love that. Christmas is the Son of God expressing the love of God to save us from the wrath of God that we could enjoy the presence of God. That all is wrapped in this little Christmas bundle. People might say they lack peace or cannot find joy. I know what it's like to feel bereft of those things, to feel no peace in my heart, to feel little joy even at Christmas time. And the first thing I would want to say to that person is, do you have access to the storehouses of God's joy? Notice what the angel said. I bring you good news of great joy, which is for all people. We studied a few weeks ago, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. So the first thing to ask is, have I become a believer if I don't feel joy in my life? For believers... Christians, 95% of the time when somebody has come to me and they're trying to wrestle with why they don't have joy, I will say something like, have you had your quiet time today? Quiet time is a time to get alone with God in prayer and in the Bible. And 95% of the time, that answer is no. There are some other reasons that, that happen in the 5%. There are things like the dark night of the soul and some other things that can happen. There are, cl there are clinical scientific reasons, I think, that we can feel depression. But for most believers, 95% of the time, they'll say, no, I really haven't spent any time with God in a while. Or somebody will say, Pastor, I've, I've come today because I have no peace in my life. And I'll say, okay, what have you done to get around Jesus? He is our peace. Well, nothing except I came to church today to talk to you. And I'm like, you want me to give you peace? I can't even send a Christmas card. <laughs> Billy Graham said simply and profoundly, in the same proportion that the world has trusted Christ, it will have peace. That's very true. Listen to it. In the same proportion that the world has trusted Christ, it will have peace. Listen, friends. Jesus is the gift of Christmas. 
All joy and all peace and all love are found in Him. Go be with Him this Christmas and find your heart lifted. Find peace flooding your heart. Find your mind marveling and worshiping at all that God put in that little swaddled mess. Discover how when Mary wrapped her baby in swaddling clothes, God really was wrapping up the greatest gift humanity has ever received. Friend, it's his birthday. And he wants to give to you on his birthday. He is that good. Will you receive from Jesus today? Let's pray. God, we recognize that you really are that good. We thank you so much for the gift of Christmas. You are infinitely and and just magnificently far beyond all we could ask or imagine. And we pray, as, as Tracy prayed earlier, that you would give us eyes to see you and a heart to receive you. For in you, these things the angels promise truly are there. We testify to the angels' veracity and truth-telling. God, we pray now as we come to this table and we move to thinking about the very end of your life, Jesus, that you would allow us to commune with you, open our hearts to receive your presence. We pray this in the name of of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our response to Christmas this morning is going to be to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made and and that He commanded us to remember by taking the Lord's Supper. Jesus arrived on earth, born as a baby to minister in all these ways we've talked about and so many more, and He continued to minister throughout His life and ministered chiefly by giving His life to pay for our sins, to give us the gift of eternal life through the forgiveness of our sin. He did that by substituting His perfect life. When we deserve death, He took our death. When we didn't deserve eternal life, He gave His to us if we confess Him as our Lord and King. Jesus literally was born to die and to resurrect back to life. His victory can be ours if we'll trust in Him. We're going to be taking communion at four stations. There are two in the back and two up here in the front. And I invite you this morning to meditate on the Son of God, expressing the love of God to save us from the wrath of God that we could enjoy the presence of God. When you're ready, come to one of these stations and take communion with us. Go ahead and eat the bread first there at the station and then take the cup, drink the juice at the station. And you can toss your cups in the trash bin beside each table. Remember, this uh, juice and this bread literally represent the body and blood of Jesus Christ by which we can have all of these gifts that He has offered us. We invite all Christians who are in good standing with their local church to take communion with us today. For I received from the Lord that which I also have given to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which He was betrayed took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, drink in remembrance of me. We remember today that God wrapped up his only son as the best gift humanity has ever received. Meditate at your seat and when you're ready, come to the table. Family hiding from the storm Found no place at the keeper's door 
It was for this the child was born To save a world so cold and hollow The sleeping town it did not know The lying in a manger low A Savior King who had no home has come to heal our sorrows is there room in your heart is there room in your heart is there room in your heart for god to write his story Shepherds counting sheep at night Do not fear the glory light You are precious in His sight God has come to raise the lowly Is there room in your heart is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write His story? You can come as you are, but it may set you apart when you make room in and train your dreams for His glory. Make room in your heart. Make room in your heart. Mother, promise light every wrong will be made right road is straight and the burdens light for in his hands he holds tomorrow is there room in your heart is there room in your heart is there room in your heart for God to write His story? You can come as you are, but it may set you apart. When you make room in your heart and train your dreams for His glory. in your heart make room in your heart make room in your heart make room in your heart
Uh, you guys want to take out your worship bullets and want to just let you know about a couple of things happening in the life of our church. Uh, please read through your worship bulletin. I won't cover everything, but I want you to know we're hiring, we're carding, we're feeding, and we're reading. Okay? Remember these four things. We're hiring. 
Uh, look at the handout in your bullets in there. We are looking for a kitchen director at FBC. And if you're interested, we'd love for you to fill out an application in the foyer and place that uh, in the office. Uh, we would love to hire you if you're interested in being our kitchen director. We're carding. Uh, what I mean by that is there are Christmas cards out there for you. Uh, if you're not a church member, we didn't have you in the church directory to know for you to get one. It's not that somebody's hating on you. We love you here. Um, but uh, that's a good reason to join the church. So you'll get Christmas cards. We're feeding. Uh, we have uh, an awesome opportunity to feed the homeless this coming Saturday, December 31st. Uh, please plan to meet at the church at 930. All the details are in here. The contact is Susan Peterson. So we're hiring, we're carding, we're feeding, and we're reading. Uh, maybe you have never read through the Bible. We want to give you the opportunity. We have a, a women's group and a co-ed option to read through the Bible in a year. They have both print and digital op options. There's one group that just meets on their phones and they write different things that they learned uh, in their, their 365 different readings uh, for the year. That's been a really cool thing, actually. They've really loved doing that with each other. So I want to invite you to to be a part of the hiring, the carding, the feeding, and the reading. Don't forget your Christmas cards. We're so glad that you're here. Merry Christmas to you and your family. We love you very much. Let's stand for our benediction and we'll be dismissed. Oh, I almost forgot something. See, he forgot, I forgot. Church family, we want to introduce uh, our newest members to you this morning. Uh, they are Greg and Cheryl Higgins. So Cher Cheryl's right over there. They can wave. They're joining our church family uh, to be a member here and also to be our music minister. We're so glad that they're both here. Welcome to you guys. I know you'll join the pastor in saying to this couple who come today, welcome to the family. We're glad you're a part. Let's have our closing benediction prayer. God, may our Christmases be full of good news and great joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you and Merry Christmas.